Do you love the idea of personal growth, but find the practice of it exhausting? We get it. We're Brandon and Megan Giggling, growth coaches with the mission to put the personal back in personal growth. If you want a new way of growing into the next version of you without the frustration, guilt, and overwhelm, you're in the right place. It's time to rethink your growth journey and make it into something that works for you. You in? Welcome to Growth Reframe. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Growth Reframed. We're so happy you're here. No, really. We're so happy that you're actually here. There's so many different things you could listen to, and we're happy that you chose us. We're happy that you're back. Today, we're going to get into building confidence. And what brought this up was our daughter and her eighth birthday that she just had. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We took her this weekend to a, it's called Frankie's Fun Park, and it's just this place where you can do putt-putt, and you can do go-karts, and you can do all the fun things. There's an arcade. And because she had never been on go-karts, we thought, let's do that. That sounds really fun. Who doesn't love a go-kart? We got in line. She was fine. All of a sudden, she's feeling a little nervous. And we're like, well, that's normal. I mean, you know, you've never done it before. It is sort of loud. But daddy will be there. Mommy will be in the car, in the other car next to you with brother. It'll be fine. Well, this kid starts to really make this up to something huge in her mind. She's crying. She's saying she can't do it. She's faking that she's going to have an accident so that she can get out of line and go to the bathroom so that she doesn't have to actually get on these go-karts with us. And eventually we just made the executive decision as parents that she has to face this fear. This is not something that we're going to let her out of. You know, you can judge our parenting skills all you want at this moment, but we made the right call. And we got on those things. She was fine. She looked like she was going to vomit. She was not happy. She was very upset. And then it was ready, set, go time. Yeah. And that that was the thing. Once we were there, I told her, I'm like, listen, you let daddy drive you. It was one of those like tandem, I don't know if you count tandem, like the side by side go karts. So I was going to be driving. They give the kid a steering wheel just so they can feel better about themselves. And I was like, listen, you let daddy drive you at 80 miles an hour on the expressway all the time. And because there's not wind and because there's not sound that's so loud, you completely trust that everything's going to be okay. But because it's loud out here and because you're seeing it, basically you're not going to trust daddy. You're not going to have confidence in me that I'm going to keep you safe. And I was like, ultimately I can go slow if you want me to go slow, but I think it's important that you do it. So she kept telling me a few times to go slow. Next thing you know, Meg and our son blow past us and she's like, go get them, go get them. And she's fine. The rest of the time she's having a blast. I kept asking her if she's okay. She was okay. By the end of it, we got off and I was like, was now, do you feel good that you were able to push through and actually do that? And she said, yeah, daddy, I would never not go on a go-kart again. And in that moment, I thought, isn't that so true for life? Because until you actually do something you're never going to actually build the confidence muscle because if you if you get scared, if you rationalize, if you don't allow yourself to do it, you'll never allow yourself the opportunity to actually experience it. And that's one of our first points, honestly, is that confidence is built through experience. Gosh, if I could tell you guys all the experiences that I've had that have led me to be who I am today, we would be here for the rest of our lives. I am not at all the person that I imagined that I would be today. And that is 100% because I have pushed past that discomfort. I have made myself go out of the comfort zone, sometimes because it was me doing it and sometimes because somebody else forced me. But either way, ultimately, I had to decide. And because of those experiences, I was able to build the confidence by simply doing the thing. Right. And I think there's a lot of perceived control, I guess, because like you said, like until you pushed yourself, but sometimes someone else had to push you. And I think we're good at like in a job or in a situation or in like a crazy situation, you hear about people doing amazing things and they were always capable of doing those things, but because they felt like they didn't have a choice in the matter, they're able to kind of push themselves further. But then in the case of the go-karts, like she had a choice. If she just faked a bathroom problem, then she could go and be out of there. And I think we do that for a lot of things. Like we don't take on things. We don't do things. And we, in doing so, we kind of hold ourselves back from allowing ourselves to have the experience and see how things are going. I, in my own life, have had a ton of times where 
things went miserably or they didn't go well or things were really hard or a struggle the first time. But then the more you do it, the more you, I hate to use the analogy again, but the more you build the muscle to allow yourself to be able to show up next time better and more confident. And it's, it's little steps, honestly, it it happens over time. But one of the things I've realized is for my own life is in doing it and allowing myself to go and pursue those opportunities, to push in those unknown waters, to build up that confidence over time. Not only does it come and I feel better, I actually build up a trust in myself that I'm capable of more because I pushed myself into it. And whether it went good or bad, I did it and no one can take it away from me. And it builds that trust in me. And the next time I can pull from that and I can pull from that over and over and over again to show that I am capable. I might doubt myself and trust me, my inner voice will go crazy anytime that things are coming up for me. But there are so many things y'all that I do today that I never would have had confidence in doing 10 years ago. I never even would have thought, like you said, Meg, that it was even a possibility for my life that I'd be doing any of the things that I'm doing. But it's only because of the fact that I did it that made me build that trust in myself that, you know, I am capable to carry this. I can do this. I am proficient in this. And even if I'm not, I'm able to learn it. I'm able to do it because I've done it so many times before. Yes, absolutely. Confidence through exposure. And one of the best parts about taking our daughter to the go-karts was that she had actually had another experience that was sort of like this when we went to Great Wolf Lodge and she didn't want to go on the slide. And she did go down the slide and she had a blast. And the best part about this whole thing was like last night when she said, you know, now that I've done the slide at Great Wolf and I've done the go-karts, I think that I've realized that when you guys tell me that I should just get past this and that I should do this anyway, even if I feel scared, that I'm always going to have a good time, that you guys won't lead me in the wrong direction, then I can feel confident to do more things. Like I'm not going to, she didn't say shy away, but I'm not going to shy away from other things that might scare me because I have trust in what you guys are saying. And now I have trust in myself that I did do a couple really hard things for me and I ended up fine. And not only did I end up fine, I actually loved it, but On the flip side of that, there are some times in our lives when it isn't so fun, when we push past that fear and we dive in and we do it and it ends up being a challenge, not a great thing. And so I just want to talk a little bit about that side of it when challenges are what builds us. Yeah. And I think that's difficult because like we were saying before, I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily choose these things for yourself, but yet they can still grow you. And man, that's tough for me to say because none of us like that. I mean, can we be real? None of us like to be pushed into scenarios that we're not comfortable in. None of us like to be having to deal with things that we might not want to have to deal with. Maybe a challenging person, maybe a challenging job, maybe a, maybe challenging kids, maybe a challenging experience in some way. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to go through the battle. We don't want to go through the struggle. Mm-hmm. But you can learn so much in the struggle and, uh, you know, it's tough. It it is. And I don't know what y'all are dealing with. And frankly, a lot of our struggles, you don't know what we're dealing with, but they're there and it's not unique to you. A lot of us think the experience is unique to us, but everyone's struggling. Everyone's having difficult times. I just talked about being depressed a couple weeks ago and there's so many people that are dealing with that. And it's really in those moments of struggle that regardless of how you're feeling in those moments and how you're coping with the stress and how you're dealing with the things, if you allow yourself to learn from the experience, if you allow yourself to take in that experience, good or bad, you'll find on the other side of that, you can build a massive amount of confidence. And really it's just how and how and how you're framing it and how you're looking at it. Because you could look back and say that was a terrible thing. Or you can look back and be like, that was the starting point for me. Mm -hmm. When I decided that I was going to go a different way, that I was going to do something different, that that wasn't working for me. That was a time for me where I realized that this wasn't what I wanted for my life and I changed it or on the same flip of the coin, you could say, well, that was the time where everything went downhill for me, but it's really in how you're framing it. And I think there's a lot of confidence that can be stirred up and built in the battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you're talking that through, I'm thinking about how... 
I've had some very challenging jobs in the past. I worked for a children's home as basically my first job out of college. It wasn't even a full-time job. It was just residential treatment for children who were severely abused and no longer had a place to call home, so they lived in a facility, and that's where I worked with them. And then after that job, I ended up going to the state of Texas and working for Child Protective Services, and both of those jobs were not easy. They almost broke me, like literally almost broke me. But you know what I can understand now looking back is that no matter what challenge I go through professionally or personally, like I will literally pull those experiences back out just to understand who I am, that I'm so much stronger than what's currently. And even if it gets harder than those things, that I am so much stronger because I've been through those, because I've had to deal with things that I didn't think that I could. And I came out okay. Not in the moment. They were horrible times. But here I am today. I'm stronger for it. I'm better for it. I understand that I can get through anything. And if there was something even worse than that currently, then I would be able to somehow find the strength to move through that and do it again. And I think that when we look back on our past and build our confidence through those experiences, it can be really powerful and we can learn a lot from that. Yeah, it's so true. And I think about, man, like all the stories we've told each other and I think we've shared on here, but just all the different things that have happened to us was like kind of going through my head as you were saying that. And a lot of them were really tough. A lot of them were really hard. Uh, I remember you talking about being bullied as a kid. Like that's that sucks. Like the, the fact is there's so many things that y'all are probably thinking about out there and they, they are tough and they do suck, but there's like so much growth that can happen with them. And, and I don't mean to say that insensitively. I think it's just in how you're looking at it and it can weigh you down or it can lift you up. One of the things for me that I find I, my confidence is built is just from knowing that God's got me, that I have my creator, that he created me with unique gifts and skills, and he's there for me. And one of the things that I have realized, and I'm just going to be completely transparent, is when things have been difficult for me recently with depression, with all the things I've been struggling with, I've shied away. I've shied away from talking to God. I've shied away from praying, which is something that I regularly did before. It's like when things are difficult, I'm almost perceiving that he's forgotten about me because I'm struggling. But one of the things is that he created me in a unique way. He didn't forget about me. I forgot to come to him. And my confidence as a person is knowing that I don't have to do it alone. Even when I felt alone, I wasn't alone. God was there with me. And that gives me a ton of confidence because if my creator gave me, a, put me in this place at this time in this space and gave me the gifts he gave me and surrounded me with the people he surrounded me with, you got to feel pretty freaking confident with that. And with the, the gifts that you've been given, you got to use those, right? Like you want to, you want to do what you're put on this earth to do. I think that's something we all want to do. But knowing that you have God in your corner is something that's huge for me. And I don't ever want to forget it. And I'm being real with the fact that I have, but I don't want to steer away from that. Because I think a lot of times what can happen is when we're dealing with struggles like I am, you can feel like you're forgotten, like God doesn't care. But he does care. He loves you. You were created for you were created in love and he's surrounding you with love. It's just how you're looking at it. And that's something that I have to constantly remind myself of. But it's something that also when I am living in a, in a good space, in a good relationship with him, I f can show up so much more confidently and so much better knowing that I can have faith that it's all going to be okay. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Never means it's going to be easy. But it does mean that I can have joy and I can be okay with where I currently am, knowing that that's not always going to be where I'm at. I love that. It's almost like the idea of even if you don't have confidence in yourself, even if you feel the worst you've ever felt, you can look to somebody who will give you that confidence, who will say, hey, it's okay. I understand you. I'm here for you. And we will get through this together. Yeah. And really, it's as simple as at the end of the day, 
We could tell you all those things. We have told you all these things. But you got to believe it yourself. Because the reality is, no one else can give you the confidence if you don't allow yourself to actually grow. Like I could sit here and say, you know what, Meg? I think you're the greatest person ever. I will lift you up. I will cheer you on. I will do everything for you. Not do everything for you, but do everything so you're in the best position to grow and be the person you want to be. But I can't give you that confidence. If you don't believe it, then it doesn't really matter. You're just going to think I'm telling you a story or I'm telling you a lie or that's what I think, but that's not how you feel. Ultimately, you have to believe it for yourself. You have to understand that you're an amazing person. I don't know most of you, but I know you're an amazing person with the, with amazing things that you're doing. And a lot of times we discount it and we say that it's not important or we say we're doing nothing when in fact we're doing a lot because we don't believe it in our own selves or we look at other people and think they should give us what we need or we're not doing what they're doing. So then we can't have confidence in ourselves. But if you just have to believe it yourself and no one else can do it for you. And that's the hardest thing in this life. There's certain things that other people just cannot do for you. And other people cannot give you the confidence you need. They can give you opportunities. They can open doors for you. But you got to step through them. And you got to show up and believe in yourself. And we could talk to you all day. But until you're willing to do that, it's going to be a real challenge. And we'll leave you all with that. We hope this gave you guys some things to think about this week. We love y'all and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Growth Reframed. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. We would love to connect with you. So shoot us a DM on Instagram at Growth Reframed. We love y'all.